everyone. Um, I hope you guys like the video we just made. It was uh, from a few months ago, but still represent what we feel like to tell you the message today. Keep building. Keep be the builders and bring out the adoption, whether Web3, whether database, whether Silicon Valley innovation, that's why we're here. So today there are two topics I want to talk about. The first one is uniform sharding, uniform scaling. The second thing is economic games. We feel like not just about the infrastructure, but how to bring adoption is still the topic. I would say start from Silicon Valley, where the next few years will still be the hardest thing and the best thing to build coming from, hopefully, this group of people coming together. So in terms of uniform scaling, why do we still care about building a base protocol and the blockchain to think about the scalability? We must ask when there are no more volume, no more transaction, no more users, why people are still building infrastructure is what Silicon Valley is great for. And the room for builders that understand that it's always, always the infrastructure builder, the innovation, the research that paves the foundation of the future. Even though it has been a great peak earlier this year, we still actually think the demand is much more to come. It's still only at 1% adoption for most of the possible product that everyone has already prototyped and built. And our approach of using sharding has been a few years in making, and I want to tell you a full story in the context of different other approaches now. As you guys know, doing scalability has been the story for the last few years, and I'll argue for the few more years, if not the next decade to come. We only are serving 10 million users using different DeFi and NFT product. Maybe at best, 100 million users have ever had any tokens. To be serving at the billion users level, whether many of the social media, social network, and many of the engagement that you can do peer-to-peer -peer in communities, we think that there's no way the infrastructure can that satisfy today. But there are a few more technology now. Layer 2, app chain, if not even zero knowledge groups have been the new approach to scaling, to do scaling and solving the trilemma of decentralization, security and scalability. So today I just want to touch a little bit on why sharding is still an important approach to this. And then the second half of the talk, I'll go through why there's still many ideas for adoption that you can think of. So the two things today is hopefully you are just a crazy student thinking about Web3 is too exciting because of technology is. The second thing is, you are thinking about the user adoption value that you want to create for users, but what are the applications, if not all this hype and all this marketing campaign, that people are lost in all the scams and like lost in value, that this is a great time to not just build technology, but bring it to the market. Marry the technology with the culture so that many more millions of users can do. So the first topic is the layer two. As you guys know, finally, only, only the last few months, Optimism and Arbitrum launched. We think that there's no way that this is the end of story. We do know that Arbitrum and Optimism take more than two years to build. Starting from the side chain and now layer two in just a general infrastructure that anything on chain, putting the data and the transition for you to very well detail, sounds like a great story. Guess what? That story is only one year old. And it's already helping many of the DeFi projects, saying that we don't need another layer one protocol to do. Sounds like a great story. What can we learn? We have another base protocol. There are a few more base protocols launching every month still. Where do not just Harmony stands, but where are all the story of transactions? Where are all the pieces tied together? We all need a framework to do it. I put it in the triangle so that everyone can easily visualize. As I said, let's think about scalability at the top. We call it the uniform scaling story. But first layer we zoom in is the layer two. 
Later to we think the top project is Arbitrum and some of the few projects here that you will hear about. So in terms of optimism, the key problem they have is the sequencer that they do think about not just proving it but actually putting all the transactions both in sequence being a single bottleneck. And how does Harmony, if not sharply compare, is we already launched multiple nodes, thousands of them, in multiple shards. Even four years ago, with the design of sharding, and launched the mainnet three years ago to all, do all this distributed processing. The key one is they can do layer two very well now in terms of verification, security, because that's what Ethereum is designed for. Layer two is very cheap now, compared to comparable to other protocol that base protocol elsewhere. But they have not solved the single model that pop up, if not even decentralization of the sequencer. So I want to here to help you contrast of the approach that we take that we are able to grow linearly, I would say even boundlessly, with the demand of the transaction. And that's a contrast of what a sequencer approach with the layer two that they still need to figure out for both optimism and arbitrage, how to actually decentralize and paralyze the sequencer. The second interesting thing we talk about is the fraud proofs of ECW that they have done. Why fraud proofs is interesting is they finally figure out that you do not need every single data for you to verify. They can randomly sam sample it. Not only like linearly, they actually have a two-dimensional two sampling that become extremely efficient. But the opposite of it is for fraud proof is optimistic. They can only confirm this transaction optimistically and say you can keep challenging it for a few more days. You need to watch the transactions. You may be rolled back if someone challenges a fraud. That becomes very problematic. Not just for large value transactions, but for actually the user experience. Right? You can do all these arbitrage, you can actually be guaranteed the fund, but how do you even design product? We think it's a fantastic use case now, but that leaves much room for us to improve. Obviously, for us, our selling point is two-second finality. That's it. We try to push, push it into one-second finality. It's not as easy as you think. But it's finality to begin with. Finality of any transaction, any value, any volume, any TPS, has been our breakthrough since four years ago once we take the sharding approach. And not only that, we have subsegment of even the leadership rotation within the shard so that if there's any lifeless problem, any misbehavior within the shard, we'll be slashing them because they put up the proof of uh, the stakes as approved to be part of the committee, that we have done that for a few years to understand what Sharding allows us to do something called the view change protocol. For those that are coming from traditional database, if not distributed system, it has been the best research that we pick up from not just in the blockchain community, but been pre-proven in distributed system, database system, that we know we are bringing the best research to production. I'm very happy to say that the last few years has been lots and lots of production issues but it has been a very, very robust approach that we're taking. It cannot get wrong. That case of research, many, many, many best papers has been taking this approach. That's why we take the sharding, but also the committee approach of something called the PDFT, the Byzantine, uh, the Byzantine from total protocol to the maximum that not only that you can work in the back end, but can be working openly with thousands of, thousands of nodes that can be malicious, that can have lightness and view change in that way. The last one is more exciting, called the account abstraction, that many protocol is talking about now, and only possible now in layer two. Because to do any change in the Ethereum based protocol, they move as fast as possible already. And that's been amazing. Moving from proof of work to proof of stake, no one, half of the world still thought it's not possible. But adding features is very different. So as a base protocol, we need to be far more progressive in not just really having done sharding and post for years now, but 
thinking about many of the feature coming that will support smart contract wallet, that will support guest fees for the proxies. So many of the things that uh, we had some of the top project like you will go here because we are learning for the best innovation experiment in this space as well. And later on, I'll talk a little bit more about smart contract wallet as well. The second best approach to the scalability norm is called the app chain. And we think Cosmo has the best ecosystem and the approach to it that I've been doing for five years already. As you guys know, Celestia are doing the data and even Binance and back in time Luna on Cosmo has really proven out the Tinderman's consensus really works. The question is, does the IBC work? Does it interconnecting the consensus among all these actions work? We think so. We think that uh, currently there are about 200 uh, Cosmo uh, Tinderman connecting, uh, many, probably tens of them connecting IBC will be the, one of the biggest ecosystems, if not even bigger than Ethereum, uh, potentially. But why are we taking a different approach in some action is what I'm here to tell you today. Action works, layer two works, what else? It's the uniform scaling. There's only one message I want you to take home. One word will be shy, two word will be uniform scalability. Action is great, except you have to run it. Your own validator, your own token economy. It's like you getting many of the server and you bring it back to your garage and say, I'm loading up in the Linux, they have a cluster setting, cluster configuration, etc. App chain is going to be great if you are that. So we're taking much more of, a, as you guys know, elastic cloud computing approach that any more demand that you have, you don't need to think about more validator or another token to secure your side chain or app chain to do that. But in any case, we must learn from the best of the approach. In this case, the data availability issue becoming very critical for many of the blockchain, including Ethereum and Harmony ourselves. So to think about that, we have done the open staking that each of the uh, shard already be able to sync within the shard. So in some way, our shard already have, is figuring out the data availability problem in terms of doing the state sharding, network sharding, and account sharding. For those that started a few years ago, uh, sharding has been the right approach, but many couldn't figure out how to do even state sharding, which we started from the day one to do it, and has been on the mainnet for a few years. The second big problem with all this app chain and, uh, and, and data problem is the state pruning that we also is at the stage of innovation, how to figure it out. It's very easy to say that you have hundreds of thousands of TPS. Once you do some calculation, the hard problem is how do you handle the data, both to sync them and to prune them. How to compress, not just for the full archival node, but for any node to be validated in transaction and for light clients on the mobile that you don't need to download any of data. And for us, we are also doing that. We are able to serve 800 million requests per day during our peak with the DeFi Kingdom. To be understanding is not just about the blockchain confirming a transaction, but be, to be able to serve at the API level, the database level, the node syncing level are all critical problem. And we start with the stay sync and stay prudent problem. And only hopefully later on uh, next year, the stateless client approach that it will be usable not just on the mobile, but maybe on the Chrome extension, maybe on an embedded marketplace that people can still fully confirm transaction without waiting for seconds, if not download, if not like centralized um, you know, like services like Inferno. The approach is called the stateless client that we have some research there as well. And the last point is everyone's favorite topic, uh, or I hope, zero knowledge groups. For those that who are still interested in coming to the space that's going to spend five, ten more years, this is the only thing that we have really push and innovate beyond anyone that think about the long term 
investment, long term, people coming in the space, why they think that innovation is not just a quick few ideas, a few tokens and incentives. There are cryptography in the zero knowledge fields that start on the Merkle trees and all this stay safe, finally is ready for production. And we think the top community is actually many of the uh, Stanford students, if not many of the researchers, starting from the Bay Area, that uh, the group is called the Zero uh, uh, a Park, that we actually very, very closely following of the research. In particular, we think the Keyless uh, Wallet, even to enable many of the way of thinking, you don't need to worry about your seed phrases, your passwords, how to sync between different devices when you are multi multi sync, will be very hard to figure out without advanced cryptography. And many of them will be used. That we've done research in the space. We released some paper here to talk about what can be if everyone gets hacked on the central exchange, if not bridges. How can you have the self custody, but without having to worry about the passwords or the seed phrases? to do social recovery. The next thing that we still care about is the bridges technology. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how, how the mistake come up, we actually have done research and published paper that we know what will be the trade-off right now, not just having multi-sig and a few backend servers to host it, but to have on-chain security. Using like clients on both of the EVM bridge uh, chains to actually verify the transaction. So for that, we also done research paper there to talk about not just the Ethereum bridge, but the Bitcoin bridge to do trustless way of bridging different chains. So hopefully you guys can really look into that, become the innovations that you guys can look at. The last part is uh, one of the things that we are the most proud of, of the dark forests games that actually started by many of the students around here that become one of the key showcase of zero knowledge group technology that we also fork and play with different incentives and different way of actually incorporating into the uh, gamification element of the incentives. Blockchains are becoming the foundation of the global economy, yet their adoption is only at 1%. That means you as a pioneer developer are shaping the future with 10x impact. Harmony is the fastest and secure sharded blockchain built for uniform scaling with on-chain security and decentralization. Blockchain states and network nodes are divided between shards, able to grow linearly and boundlessly with elastic transaction demands. If your application has more demand, we can add more shards. Additionally, cross-shard transactions are coming in 2023, maintaining a solid user experience when interacting between applications on different shards. In 2023, users can expect a balanced network between shard zero, shard one, and potentially more. Our protocol is battle tested. At peak, Harmony's protocol achieves 500 transactions per shard per second, and our elastic endpoints serve 800 million requests per day. Our end-to-end -end security relies only on the core protocol and smart contract execution. No censorship, single point of backend failures, centralized credentials, or identity leaks. Harmony is an effective proof-of-stake Ethereum-compatible blockchain, supporting DeFi, gaming, NFTs, DAOs, middleware, bridges, gateways, and wallets. Harmony will drive adoption in 2023 with a focus on protocol development, wallet integrations, community, and cross-chain partners. Additionally, we will be researching zero-knowledge proofs with a focus on compression, speed, privacy, and fairness. Our long-term mission is to create open consensus for 10 billion people, becoming a human protocol built for future generations to create in Harmony. We build tools for users and developers bringing the absolute best research into production, all to help communities create radically fair economies with liquid markets full of engagement and prosperity. We jumped off a cliff, building our airplane on the fly, but we're a day one blockchain startup with crazy ambitions, yearning for the vast and endless possibilities of Web3. Our invincible summer awaits. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, love what we put together here. Um, So that's our foundation. Hopefully the next half of the slides is really thinking about where are the applications, what are the utility, 
what values do a user really care? A little bit more fun experiments as well. The idea is don't think about just many of these as games or incentives. Think of them as the economics that we can play almost, almost as a country on thousands, if not hundred thousand of users that is once in a lifetime opportunity, not just about issuing a currency for a new country, but how to facilitate, most of all, sustain the economy for these millions of people, uh, something of value for decades to come. So we use the word economics because for finance, you're really dealing with trading with the counterparty, a few tens of traders. The economy is really where thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people play a game together that believe that this is the way to do development. The way we structure it is we know that the beginning of the internet is domain names. And now we have so few, a few cool things called the crypto names as well, like the .eth and what's not. But the last part of it is, these are all something called the radical market. That I want to tell you how to tie what happened in the Web2 space and now in the Web3 innovation together with the economic games. The internet domain is something that I want to announce today. We are fully developing a top level domain called Bob Country. Something that we have purchased for some time that we know that whether it's something called the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or you just have a group of people doing multi-sig to hold the treasury, or just a community of Telegram and Discord, they actually identify themselves as an interest group, maybe all the way to the digital version as a country. We got the top level domain name, not just about a crypto thing, but what your browser on the mobile, even an IoT device will recognize. So that we are really not thinking just about how to bring DeFi to the mobile wallet. We are really thinking about how to bring Web2 and Web3 together. And there's no way for us to force people to install Chrome extensions, setting up a new wallet, but to know where the Web2 is. The Web2, the starting point, is the domain names. What we're doing here is we're going to really think about what are still the business? We are so worried about the few thousand users and the few millions of TVL. No one knows the business in the domain names for the last two decades. The peak of it is now, it's just go daddy. And it's a $10 billion business. We're not trying to disrupt it. We want to put go daddy internal domains on the Web3 stack. If you are still innovating about the blockchain games and DeFi, that's all great. Right? Because those are the primitives we need to build it with. But the business opportunity itself is go daddy way of thinking about how to bring domain names to literally they have 50 million users of just creating new domain names every year. So go daddy business is great because not only is big, but think a lot more of the innovation internet two decades. The fact that they still taking the auction and escrow much like what you would do on Uniswap for your tokens. They really, really need to think about the domain names in the traditional business and how to build a marketplace and auctions on that. It's what you have done that already on Uniswap, if not OpenSea, but now for traditional domain. The second way to think about it is what many of the new creator is doing on something called a link tree. Again, a very simple short links for any of your social media. They don't do anything but showing you where to go. It's what internet enables us with the domain names. Link tree, again, have 23 million users. How many blockchain projects have more than a million users? But for us to think a little bit broader, not just blockchain connecting to the logistics and IoT, but thinking about connecting to the entire Web2. Again, not just about hoping the Web2 users will convert to Web3 games, but physically, infrastructure, 
connecting with them is hopefully we will start with the minimum of the names. The last one is your favorite, it's called the LinkedIn, as you guys know. Uh, it is already a $23 billion business when it sold to Microsoft back in the time. It's even bigger now that the recruitment business is six billion and the advertising business is five billion. Why did I say it is? Because this is a story of digital identity. It starts with your names, a few links, and the skill set we put on the profiles. And the best thing that blockchain can do is make sure you connect it and be able to match making. Much like Uniswap did it for the tokens, OpenSea did it for your NFT, and what a new marketplace called Red Hill Market can do it for humans. Imagine a marketplace for not just interchangeable, but the non-fungible humans that we can do. This may how it could look like. That could be very similar to what a link tree that many of the Gen Z would actually put up. We put out something a little bit more interesting. We call it the S dot country. For Stephen, I got my shortest name. It's just an S dot country relaunching in a few weeks. And it will be fully also connected to the crypto names. And we own it. Just the number one. Nothing else, no any the number one. So we find a way to connect them together. We will tell the story of how this become a profile both in the Web2 two, web two space, but actually it will be useful as a crypto Web3 names as well. But the skill set will be more interesting. Instead of showcasing that you are like you are authenticated to this Twitter ID and a few followers, really tell me what is your vanity metric that you want to match with. When you go to a event like this, what do you want other people to remember you by? Is it how much fun you have raised? Definitely not just where you go to school and uh, like, uh, like what kind of technology that you know. I want to tell you, I want you to tell me how many lines of code you have written in C++. And for myself or Campbell. And for you maybe how many people you have hired, how many people you have connected in this way. So this becomes the analytics humans that will be very valuable. It's not just reputation, it's not just social connection, it's not just a long list of resume, but a few vanity measures. It's only the attention we have to manage, to connect, but very valuable on blockchain. So the last one is uh, really becoming the marketplace, whether you're tipping someone um, or actually using some way to do the content. You don't want recruiter, you don't want agent to help you to do any transaction. Can you actually put in your put in the content information on the chain? But actually protected by the blockchain, hopefully with some privacy if not zero knowledge based technology. But the fact that only only those that pay and actually matching your skill, whether for love, for jobs, or for opportunities, that blockchain can become the platform of change and matching. The last one is obviously even stating my hourly rate of $75 per hour is only the only way to future. We have no problem of 1 billion people on the platform. We have problem of our attention and energy. Crypto names is what we call it, and will be the shortest, easiest way to remember. It's just the number one. The way we think about it is obviously ENS have already have done the best possible adoption. If not the most robust NFT in general revenue and sales and trading volume, but it's still about just five millions um, of the names. We think it will be actually much broader. But for people to think that it's not about the winnings that you can never get, we actually want it to be even auctionable. We also, we also want you to bid on the names that you want. So that all the domain names that will be gone, it will be connected to the web two space that you actually can identify on the social media profile. And to think about another great project other than ENS that is called Unstoppable, they have figured it out. They give you the dot x dot nft dot eight eight eight. And those very fun. We actually don't think this is the end of story. Even Unstoppable, again, as small as it means. Be able to raise back in the time 80 million at a billion dollar valuation. It's why I want to give you the sense that 
we have just started and the adoption is now where the trading, the DeFi or the games is only. If you think about the infrastructure, it will always come and it will always last. People actually in the domain in business is an infrastructure builder for the internet uh, era to come. The last part I still want to emphasize is uh, we must know why so bad NFT reputation. And in this case, for me to generalize it, call them interoperable memes. This is what really TikTok and Reddit have done much better than blockchain. Blockchain keep talking about the tokens and the NFT, but if you look at TikTok, they don't care about the money value, but how viral, how mimetic it can become. It's also what we have a few campaigns to really come around the dot one uh, memes as well. Uh, that will be our last few slides. That may be how it looks like. This is our Genesis blog, minted on all dot one dot country. And we have the rental markets. markets. I won't go over it today. Suffice to say that it's not just about how to launch another economy, another product, but how to sustain it. We have done well. The industry has done well the last three years. How to get to two trillion, three trillion dollar. What they haven't done yet is how to sustain it. So they are actually much more economic theory that actually just like many of the railroad, many of the actually like country level development, that they figure out that it's not about whether to give them more money, venture capital, that bootstrap it. They couldn't figure out how to sustain the economy. I keep asking myself since the last few months, why did we build such a high but also high and innovations, but couldn't sustain. So I finally read a few more economic books that I skipped in my college. Uh, that actually have a few theory that land tax is so important. So a fair way to participate, but also think about the fair price and uh, quadratic uh, uh, way of doing not just voting, but the taxation is going to be the key that will be innovating. We have a few more references here, so hopefully you guys uh, will go to this talk. Um, uh, we'll, uh, last video, I promise. Thank you everyone for coming today.